So this was actually my first time making this. When you're pouring it, you wipe the edges right away so it doesn't get sticky and especially the rims because um, then you'll just be left with like a very sticky jar. Then you flip it upside down for like five minutes and the heat will kind of make the seal. And to check if the seal is good, you press on the top. If you hear a pop, then it's not ready. Look at how beautiful this color is. The prettiest jelly. Leia, down. Leia, you can't have this. Oh, that is easy. Okay. Gosh. Stop. She really wants to try this jelly. <laughs> yeah. It's such a pretty color. Yeah. And I want your guys' honest opinion. Fine. I know I know you will, Alexa. <laughs> okay. I really tasted the bread. Oops. It's really sweet. But I didn't I probably all the I didn't get sugar. It. I really good though. Very sweet. That is better than store bought. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Are you ready for yours? What? Leah? <laughs> Squirrel. I got the recipe from this Gnome Centennial Cookbook. I'll put the I'll put the recipe Yum. in the description below. Um, one thing I would do differently is pour it right away into the jar because I let it sit for a second and the pectin kind of mm. clumped up together, but it's still good. So I actually had this cookbook for years and I didn't find it till this summer when I was decluttering my house. And I have been always wondering, how do you make fireweed jelly? It tastes so good. I thought it was such a hard process and I had no idea that I had the recipe this whole time. So let this be a life lesson for you guys. Sometimes things that we think are going to be really hard end up being really easy. Like this fireweed jelly, I always thought it was such a difficult process and something that I would never be able to do, but it's actually really simple. I I know some of you might be like, oh my gosh, stop being so dramatic. It's just jelly, but um, I'm not that type of person that makes their own bread, jellies, jams, blah, blah, blah. That's never been me. So this is a big deal for me. Um, I just think it's funny that I've had the recipe for years and I didn't realize it. So before I end this video, there are a few tips that I have if you're gonna try this recipe out. The first portion where you do the tea, juice, whatever you want to call it, you can go ahead and just double up on it. I had my blossoms frozen because we picked them not locally. We were on a trip and we flew them back. So I don't know if it tastes differently with fresh blossoms, but I mean, it still tasted great with the frozen ones. So I doubled up on that. I. I did have some leftover tea because I ran out of pectin, so I have to get more pectin. I don't know how long the tea lasts, but I'm gonna do that fairly quickly, so it should still be good. Another tip, um, you can just use a strainer, but I doubled up. I used a metal strainer and a cheesecloth just in case there were any like bugs or leaves or like little twigs still in there. That way I could definitely just get the juice part. I'm sure you can just do a strainer, but I'm paranoid, so I did double. Um, uh, so yeah, if you guys try the recipe, uh, again, I'm going to write it down in the description. Let me know how it came out for you guys. It came out great. It's very sweet, but it's really good. I hope you guys try it, try new things. I'm going to keep trying new things. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed and enjoy eating your delicious jelly. Bye.